welcome to the She Needs Sense podcast. I wasn't going to record a podcast this week because I have dengue fever. But I'm just sitting here so I was like I may as well record a podcast. And I had a few things on my mind because I got this comment from this guy. And I just, I felt like it needed to be talked about. So we're going to talk about finding our own individual happiness. So that we don't get hurt when things go wrong in relationships. We're also going to talk a wee bit about affirmations and just whatever we get into because I haven't really planned this. (laughs) So here we go. So I just wanted to explain what is going on right now. So I'm in Bali and I have dengue fever. If nobody knows what dengue fever is, it's basically, um, it's also known as break bone disease because it actually feels like your bones are breaking and I can vouch for that because it's so painful. But basically, like, it's, um, it comes from, like, animal bites. So I got bit by a mosquito that gave me de- dengue fever. Um, it's just a really intense, tense fe- fever. Um, so I have been cooked up. Not that I've been cooked up all my fucking year. But anyway, whatever, I'm cooked up because, um... I have dengue fever and the symptoms are like really, really high fever, especially at night and just nausea, sickness, brittle, brittle um, joints, bones, bruises, just in general, fucking painful. It's just a virus that attacks your body and it could last for up to two weeks. Um, so I'm on like day five, right? day four, day five, I can't remember, but um, I'm, get, get, I, I'm hoping I'm getting through it. The first few days I had such high fever, like I was hallucinating and I was so afraid. I remember being really afraid the first day, being like, what the hell is this? Kind of thought it was COVID, but um, I just knew it was more than COVID. So I got tested for both and I had dengue fever. Um, And I just wanted to talk about like how I calmed myself because obviously it can be really concerning when you get sick away from home and people get really scared. And I just think like one of the best affirmations for me when it comes to stuff like this is the words I am safe when I found out what it was and how to treat it and got literally prepared myself for what was going to happen then I can say you know I'm safe I've done my best and I have to like calm down my fight or flight because it's like my body was preparing for um danger when you when something foreign is happening to your body you don't really know so like I was really anxious my heart bit like my heart palpitations were going crazy um, and then like throughout the days even after I'd found out or being diagnosed I was still fight or flight and this kind of reminds me of like when I'm traveling or anything like that or when I'm doing something that's you know sometimes seen as a threat to your body or to your environment so you're just you know like if you're even just like you know like when you or driving and something happens like someone pulls out or something and you're like ah. so you're going to fight or flight because your body is thinking that it's in danger so you've got a high heart rate so I had a high heart rate I really I had anxiety it was like and then I was like why have I got anxiety I need to like sit with this and understand and realize that the reason why I've got it is because my body was expecting danger I have now you know done all the steps that I can do just like if I was going traveling and doing all the steps that I can do and um, fight or flight is there to prepare you um, to go into battles say but um, so anyway I had to prepare myself mentally physically for everything that's going to happen and then I can calm down my um, nervous system and be like okay I am safe and this was another good and it really calmed me down because like we forget that to calm ourselves down when we're in high stress modes like when it comes to work or how many emails we get and we're just stress mode but we just need to like calm down and be like take a deep breath and be like I'm safe I'm loved I'm supported those things can really really help and that really helped me throughout this um fever and instead of looking at the dengue like it's the worst thing in the world I'm so sick I try and find the good in it so I say because obviously I can't go out and I can't go out this weekend I said to Siobhan I was like Siobhan I know that something bad would have happened or like we just would have been too drunk and we would have embarrassed ourselves so I think dengue is saving us from this right now so this is how I like get the positives out of my dengue fever (laughs) so that was something and oh yeah I can just tell you now while I'm here about so I never got to tell you in the last episode about um my hypnotherapy and sleep so I actually got hypnotherapy for my sleep 
because I wasn't sleeping. This was a few years ago. It's two years ago. And I wasn't sleeping because <laughs> I didn't know. I just didn't think I was a good sleeper. I just never really slept. And I went through a really hard time where I just didn't sleep. And I just kind of felt like, oh, I don't sleep. <laughs> and it's like, I, I slept for like three or four hours, but always woke up groggy and crappy. But I thought, okay, I'll try hypnotherapy. And I went to hypnotherapy and you know you're in sort of like a meditation for like three hours and just trying to I didn't really know what to expect I thought I was just going to be zonked out and then I would just come out of it and then I would just be able to sleep but it's actually like all internal work like trying to find out the the internal reason like the trauma where this came from or something so you have to sort of relax into it and then like so I'm like meditating there like for like she's like got me in a just med like a relaxed state not even meditative state like a more relaxed state and then like I'm like a few hours into it or maybe an hour and a half and I'm relaxed and chilled and then she's like when was the first time you felt like this and couldn't sleep and she just like snapped her fingers and I was back at like in Spain where I lived and like I was with my a boyfriend at this time and I even remembered like where I was what was what color the bed sheets were like what clothes were on the ground it was like I was just there and it was like the first time that maybe I just was really panicked and couldn't go to sleep and it was because he just never came home so I'm rocking back and forward in my bed like oh my god like you know he's with some other girl blah 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 and I'm just traumatized from that moment like I am traumatized like my heart is racing I never really thought about it after I probably just probably the next day I probably came back and I just probably believed what I said so that's probably why I just never dealt with like the anxiety and pain I felt um so I just, I don't know, I must have just associated sleeping with, with that. I don't know, but anyway, I had to do this, all this inner work and I had to like clear out all the energy around it. I had to like basically like say bye to this moment and realize that I am safe and that I can sleep. Um, So I had to like clear all that out and just do like a whole visualization. And then one of the main things she said to me, she gave me affirmations and it was just like, you know, you can, I am safe and it just really calmed me down, just calmed me down all the time and then I could just sleep. Um, it actually worked really, really well. So I slept like a baby afterwards. It took a few, it took a week or so to like kick in properly. But like after that, I was just like out like, out like a light. Uh, and she gave me loads of other things to help me fall asleep as well. But in terms of just hypnotherapy, like I felt like that was really beneficial just to get, because sometimes you just think like, oh, it's just, it's, it's just, I just can't sleep. But sometimes there's like an underlying reason why you can't sleep or there's an underlying reason why you have these certain b- bad habits. Like you probably know how to kick them. Like, like if someone asked you, do you know how to kick this habit? You probably could tell them, but like something's stopping you. So yeah, that's kind of what hypnotherapy for is for. And I just wanted to just emphasize that I am safe because it really really helped me and eased all my worries so yeah so that's the one thing I wanted to talk about the next thing I wanted to talk about was something that somebody messaged me that I'm really disgusted by and you know I'm very used to trolls and they you know there's no like I'm not really phased by them like I'm so used to them by now like it doesn't really bother me but this was from a grown man and he sent me this mess so basically like I got bit by the mosquito um and all that and he messaged me now this person has kids like I seen his profile I was like what and he said you're you get what you deserve for leaving your boyfriend that poor fella you used him or something like this and I was like what you think I deserve to be bitten because I'm just living my life in Bali and like pursuing my dreams I was just like really really I was really angry at the time I was just like how can someone even think like that and then I was like what is that do people think like that because a lot of people did message me and they're like how can you leave Jack and I don't know if it was in like a oh how can you leave Jack or how the hell can you leave Jack I didn't know which one which tone it was but I never took it on and I was just like I know what I'm doing like so um but I just wanted people to know that I do not need to be in the same country or the same stuck to Jack's hip for me to know that our love is real. Like I can still fulfill my dreams whilst having a committed relationship. And I just 
want people to know that that is possible because that is what I am doing right now. And I don't need to forget about my dreams and dampen them and not go just because I'm in love with someone. I can do both. Like I can, if the relationship is secure, then I can go and pursue my dreams and I can also be in a committed relationship. Yeah, it's going to be different. It's going to be hard. But it doesn't mean it doesn't work. And I just want to go through like what I felt at that time. So here I am in the middle of pandemic and a loving relationship that I found in my home where I'm living with my parents temporarily until this pandemic is over. But right, but then I find out that I can go back to Bali, which is like my life, my passion, my work, where I'm most happy. Um so at the time I did think if I leave him, will I lose him? And will I lose the love? But then is it really love if the love isn't strong enough to allow me to live my dreams? If you get what I mean, like love will allow you to go and live your dreams. And if that if it doesn't work when you go and do your thing to make your happiness, then it probably would never have worked out anyway. I Like it's just sort of, that's something that came from the alchemist, the book, The Alchemist. So, you know, he falls in love. It's a really good book, by the way. He falls in love. He's out to find his personal legend, which like, like in, there's like a code to it so basically he's out there trying to find his purpose and throughout the purpose he falls in love and on the way he just falls in love with this person and she's called Fatima and he's like no no you know what I'm not gonna go anymore because I find what I want I find love I find love like if I leave here now to go find my love or to go find my purpose then I will lose the love of Fatima but in the book then it says You must understand that love never keeps a man from pursuing his destiny. If he abandons that pursuit, it's because it wasn't true love. The love that speaks the language of the world. So that's what it says in um, The Alchemist. And it's just, it just doesn't, just because you love someone doesn't mean you can stop pursuing your dreams like you don't have to be you know living in the same house in the same town like you can go off and, and like I've seen so many success stories come on th- through my inbox as well so thank you for them um and like so far for me like um it's successful for me because me and Jack are probably to be honest I'm better than I ever am because like I know for sure or something like I even know more I think like it actually made me love him more because I was like oh it just the fact that he just allows me to just do this free like, willy he's just like yeah whatever like do what you need to do and like he even says to me on there and then he died like because it's just like so healing to be with the secure person so he says i said like you know are you are like are you not worried or are you afraid and he's like no why are you worried and he's like she loves me and i was like oh okay that makes a lot of fucking sense like why would I be worried if you, you know what I mean like we have to trust each other's word and then another thing kind of hit my mind as well because was it because I was a girl no I'm not saying he meant this but was it because I'm a girl I pursued my dreams like it was so frowned upon like I'm just kind of throwing out there to see what what the views are because I'm just like you know Jack went away for three months and was in Liverpool I never seen him those three months and nobody says he's leaving me Nobody says, like, how dare he? Nobody said anything. But, like, as soon as I go and do something for my career, then it's like, how dare I deserve fucking mosquito bites? So there's me, like, okay, is this because I'm a woman? Or, I don't know. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there. I don't know if that's what he meant. But nobody ever said anything whenever he did his... And, and like, he was spending more time away from me than I am going to be spending time away from him now like our plan is to see each other in a few months whilst then it was longer so is it because I'm a woman I don't know food for thought I suppose and if I wasn't you know pursuing my happiness and my goals like I even noticed myself like putting my happiness onto him well not really I understand what codependent is like so I I kind of was aware I knew what was going on like I knew that like if he wasn't able to see me on a Sunday be like oh I'm sad because I didn't have my true life and my true goals happening because I wasn't in the place where I meant to be I was living in my mum's freaking house so I just knew that like I was like projecting my like insecurities onto him like and I just didn't want that to be because I would and then like there was a chat I, I said no to Bali the first time because I just felt like me and Jack were in a new relationship and I just wasn't ready and then like if I'm if I said no to something and like 
to be there with him so I don't lose him then there was a bit of a resentment there well there like I didn't feel resentment but I knew resentment would have grown I knew I would have always wanted to go away and pursue my goals but I just I didn't know if it was an option or not but like seeing our relationship grow and seeing how secure he is like it was just like an easy decision because he was just like yeah of course like do whatever you need to do like I'm just gonna be here when when you come back and we're gonna figure it out and he's gonna come here and blah 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 and I can understand that I am really lucky because my partner's really secure with our relationship and then there has been times where you know I've been in a relationship that didn't work so well but that's gonna be why it didn't work because because I'm an avoidant attachment sign basically like I run <laughs> when someone tries to change anything to do with my life I've definitely changed now for sure like I make a lot more sacrifices than before but an example of this was I my, one of my last relationships I was going over to Australia I wanted to be with him I was only going to be there for the three months and then I was going traveling again but then I would be back so he was like no no no, I can't see you if you're only going to be here for three months and although we loved each other like that wasn't going to work for me because that I, at the time I didn't know what it was but I was triggering my attachment style my avoid attachment style to say like you can't let me do what I my desires and dreams okay then like that's not going to work for me and it's not going to work for you because you need me to be here for you to feel secure and I need to be able to live my dreams in my life so I feel like that's why me and Jack work as well because he's that secure that he doesn't need me to be in the country to be in a stable relationship he allows me to travel and do what I need to do and I would do the same for him as well and that's why becoming more secure and having more self-love is really important in relationships because you can see although I loved that last person because he was insecure about our relationship it kind of broke down I'm not saying it was his fault or my fault it was just in general like that's how that's how it worked I was an avoidance so that actually means I'm insecure as well so it was like the both of us just clashing but like I've now chose to like become secure in myself so that my relationships are better so that's why it's just important to understand and your triggers and understand where you're insecure and why you're insecure and how you can better yourself yeah I just wanted to explain that as well and I also wanted to talk about that relationships shouldn't be I depend on him and he depends on me for my happiness like it should be there's a nice wee saying here actually I'll just find it an outstanding love doesn't come from two half fulfilled people coming together to make one whole complete life outstanding love comes from two whole people coming together to share and enhance their already full and beautiful lives so it's just about like finding your own true happiness and then you're not dependent on that other person for your happiness you've got your own happiness and you're not dependent on that relationship to work in order for you to be happy because that can be so so damaging like I actually even like wrote or I've said to my therapist I was like is it normal that like I think I would be okay if we broke up like like I like I want to be with him for the rest of my life but like I would be like okay and she's like yeah that's totally healthy and I was like oh so this is what it feels like to be secure because like before in the previous relationships I'm like oh my god I would die without him like lying in bed I'd be like what if he left me and like that was just not the way to be because when you're like that when you're living in a fear of someone leaving you then you make decisions out of fear so you start molding your personality to them you start doing everything to please them and then next thing you're pleasing you're just becoming a people pleaser and you're not actually your true self and you're finding your true happiness and you're just molding you know you're just you're just going further and further and further away from self and you just don't have this relationship with yourself like you're just molding and I don't know if any of you's ever been in a relationship where the other person's insecure so like you're they're depending on you for their happiness and how smothering that can be for you and I want you to like take that into account or if that's ever happened to you or reflect on any of your past relationships and how it felt to be someone else's sole happiness like it doesn't feel good and like after time the relationship just becomes so much pressure and when you're when you don't have self-love or you're not doing your own happiness and they're not doing theirs it can just become so smothering and it just breaks down so that's why self-love in the relationship is probably the best thing that you can do for the relationship is to get your own sense of self and when you have your own sense of self then the relationship is just an add to your life it's not your sole happiness 
um, this was something that I recognized in a lot of people as well through my DMs and stuff like they're just like they basically tell me this whole spiel about this guy and then at the end it's just like what do I do and I'm like you've basically told me a whole spiel about this guy is absolutely not right for you he's toxic he's awful but what do I do I want him back you want him back because he is your happiness at that point like he is your soul happiness but if you understood you what's important to you your happiness yourself then you wouldn't be relying on this person's validation for your happiness and that's sort of what's wrong in I don't know in my inbox anyway and like when I talk to coaches or relationship coaches therapists it's just the lack of sense of self that most young adults have at this moment and that we just rely on someone else to bring us our happiness and it's the wrong thing it's just it's just the wrong thing to do and we need to learn how to have our own self-love but then how do we learn to have our own self-love and relationships first of all we need to have our own independence and keep our own tasks our own hobbies and figure out what we love rather than just spending all of our time with the other person I know some people spend a lot of time and they're fighting with that but if you want to develop your own sense of self then you need your own time you need your own hobbies and this will help you just have another source of your happiness to always fall back on rather than relying on the other person to bring you happiness that day or that week or whatever another way to look at it is like I could be really anxious and insecure you know in a long distance relationship like what if Jack finds somebody else but then if you sit back and think you know if he finds somebody else and he got swayed then he's not the person for me is he because then he got swayed and if he wants to use the distance as an excuse then if anything, it probably did me a favor to find out quicker. Um, so instead of like worrying, oh my god, what if? Just be like, if that happens, that is not the right person for me. Another way to have self love in relationships is to have self compassion. Many of us make mistakes. We're humans. We all make mistakes, and we often beat ourselves up with them in relationships or when you're single. You know, maybe you drunk text an ex. Maybe you are really angry at a part at your partner and you were really drunk or you were just really angry one time then we tend to like beat ourselves up for those things and like they become you know grudges within us and we need to really give ourselves compassion because we all make some mistakes like that and our, we're all we can we can be triggered it's as long as we you know learn from those mistakes and reflect so the next time you have like an outburst or something like that then you can just go into your journal and you can just reflect and go you know what I was feeling like this because you know of something he did once and you know what he's not, he hasn't done that again and he hasn't given me anything to like think he would do that again so I need to calm that in a normal trigger reaction down and I need to forgive myself for that action because it rose for a reason and now I'm learning from it. Another step is learning that you are enough you know, some of us are add up at night like I'm not good enough and our partners are with us for a reason. So ask them. Ask them, what do you see in me? Like, what are my qualities? What do I like? What do you like about me? And start to like really love yourself for those qualities that they love in you because they love them in you. So why don't you love them in you? So once you start seeing those qualities, start validating your own self and realizing that like I am enough. I was born enough for the right person then you can just start to love yourself and when you love yourself it just shines through in the relationship and just everything so just just begin to like have compassion look at yourself and, th- and think like what do I like about myself and I sit now today and think of three things that you like about yourself like qualities how you look like certain things like we just forget to tell ourselves these things we're constantly thinking about the negative and we never ever fill our minds up with what we like about ourselves and that's it's not good guys we need to like change the conversation in our own heads because we're just taught to bloody hate ourselves or something I don't know where it comes from but I know I do know where it comes from but we need to change the conversations and it needs to start now and if you're single you know it's even better because you can just begin this whole self-love program right now before you get into a relationship right like you can develop self-love in a relationship but obviously a lot of people develop self-love single because they have so much time to spend with themselves so if you're single and you're listening to this 
this is your chance to become a whole self-loved validated person so that when you get into a relationship like they just add to your life and you don't need them at all to like fulfill your life like they're just last they're just add to your life and if it ever breaks down for whatever reason that like you have everything you have your self-love you have all that so you don't get super super hurt um I think that's a reason why we all get really really hurt because we just put so much happiness onto this one person and without them like everything is just taken from us and I mean that happened to me in my last one not my last one but the one that really hurt me because like my whole life just revolved around him and now I've just put so much things in place that I know that I'll be okay yes it's gonna hurt I'm gonna have to grieve but it won't be earth shattering um another thing that I really advise people to do is to be present in life and in relationships because when we start putting emphasis on the future when we start worrying about the future say we're like I'm gonna get married to this person I'm gonna do this and then next thing it's taken from us it just hurts that extra bit more and sometimes even when we're with our partners or we we just tend to be so unpresent we're like what if they break up with us what if this happens what if they cheat on me those are the things that are going on in our head and it steals our present moment of joy with this person so if you just be present with this person, especially if you're an avoidant like me as well, being present was so important for my um, commitment issues because I used to be like, oh, what if this person's not right for me? Or what if this or what if that? Instead, I chose to be present and be like, am I enjoying this person's company? Am I enjoying this person's touch, kiss right now? And like, that's all I'm going to concentrate on. I'm not going to worry about the future. I'm not going to worry about the past. Right now, I'm having a great time with this person and that's all that matters for now and that's all that I want to concentrate on and that really really transformed my life because I stopped worrying about the future and like I could worry right now about what's going on long distance but like every single day is amazing I have an amazing partner who supports me and I'm also living my dream so like presently it's amazing and yeah like plan for the future like I plan for the future I think yeah this and this and this but I don't dwell on it I don't dwell on the future for my happiness. I put plans and I put plans and goals out there and be like, yeah, okay, there's a goal and there's a plan, but I don't dwell on it and be like, if that happens and when that happens, that's when I'll be happy. I just choose to be present. And yeah, it's really life life changing when you just choose to be present. So yeah, like that is just a few steps to begin self love and to tell you basically that you can have love and your dreams at the same time um, and it's just sort of my view on it but I thought that I put up a question box and was like okay I'm going to answer a few questions in the question box and um, this week at the end of my podcast which is a new thing so like bear with me if you don't like it then tough luck <laughs> so somebody just wrote in and goes why do women love a bad boy and nice and nice men give us the ick now this is just something I read I can't even remember where this came from or like what book it came from or something but somebody says that nice men don't actually give us the ick it's just the fact that depending on our traumas or past relationships and usually when we're um kids and teenagers we have bad relationships because we both don't know what the fuck we're at so you're kind of you're kind of used to just being treated like bad so when a nice guy comes along like a nice guy who's been through his own shit has got through it has like evolving and fulfilled and he comes along and he wants to sweep you off your feet it's because we are that unfamiliar with the feeling that we just reject it our bodies just reject it with like the ick feeling um i don't know how true that is but that's just like something that i um got from a book or something okay so the next question is is it normal to still think about an ex even though you don't want to be with them yes it of course it is like this person is a massive part of your life this person brought you joy happiness pain trauma anything so this person is a big part of your life so of course it's completely normal to think about them it's normal to miss them um like it's a part of the grieving process to think about them like stop trying to like be like no I'm fine and like push them out of your brain like they actually deserve that place in your brain because they played a part in your life they they probably played a part in your involvement in relationships they probably made you a different person and you probably learned a lot from them so yes it's normal to think about them and it's also 
normal to understand that you don't want to be with them that's totally totally fine okay before i get to the next question i just want to say sorry about the rain because it started to rain and i don't have a studio so let's just roll the rain and pretend it's like a relaxing sound in the background and um, but the next question is should i block my ex it's a question that comes up um quite regularly my opinion hell fucking yes like when you're in love with someone it's it lights up those same centers in your brain as like doing drugs and like addictive things like drinks and stuff like that so when you when an addict goes off drugs they need to go cold turkey because if they get only a little bit they're getting that hit and they're getting that back into their system those brain waves are going those love freaking drugs are just going all over your brain so when you have a quick look just a nosy just to see what they're up to and i know we all do because i do it too but um like i want you to know that it's getting your fix and it's bringing you back so for me definitely for three months i don't know like 30 days at least at least 30 days block and try your best not to go on there i know we slip up but when you slip up you're getting that fix and what happens when an addict gets a small fix that means they're back at square one like it doesn't mean that they're they're like oh you can just have a little bit yeah you think you can have a little bit but it actually does spark up that part of your brain and you're like oh my god love 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 and it's all over your brain and you're looking at it and you're obsessed with it and you're constantly looking at their stuff because it's sparking it's just making you have that little spark of dopamine of love in your brain and it's bringing you back so should you um delete them yeah i mean i'm friends now with some of my exes and but it took months to get back to that and i definitely feel like i block i blocked all of them at the start so and i think it's the best thing that i could have done because i spent years i'm mean, like like the first the heartbreak that was really bad like i just looked at them every day every fucking day why would i do that to myself it was like i was never healing and then being like why am i not healing i'm not even with them and i'm like i'm literally sparking the dopamine in my brain the freaking i'm getting the fix every day by looking at those fucking pictures so that's my advice definitely not um yeah definitely block (laughs) guys i'm just reading through the questions and a guy wrote in and he says how do i help my girlfriend learn self-love while staying in a serious relationship with her that actually melted my heart first of all because i am followed by most of girls i never really get questions from boys and that just makes me feel so nice that like he just really wants her to feel self-love and it's so important that like your partner does care for you like that so any guys listening to this um how to support your partner self-love self-love journey is you know when you sh- you're like she looks pretty and you don't say it say she looks pretty like having a partner can actually make someone secure if they're a secure person like it can be so healing and I actually fell in love with myself a little bit when I was in the first relationship um, because I remember I remember I used to wear makeup every single day. Like every single day. I mean, full on winged eyeliner, foundation, like guys, the full kaboom. And I remember being in a relationship with um, this guy at the time and I remember him looking at me in the morning and I mean, I never liked myself without makeup and he used to look at me and be like, you're so beautiful you're so beautiful and I used to be like what the hell I'm not even wearing makeup but like that made me fall in love with myself because he loved me for me and he loved me without all the makeup and he loved me like and it just made me actually develop self-love for myself like in my natural self so when you think she looks beautiful don't forget to tell her like I always say to Jack 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 like sometimes I do myself up and Jack doesn't tell me like he's like He's not like, oh, you look lovely. But it's not even that he doesn't think that I look lovely. He just doesn't think to voice it. Because sometimes, like, I had to sit down with him and be like, you know, if you think I look nice, you need to tell me. <laughs> like, it's something like, like I would need. Like, if I look, if I, if I do myself up, like, I'm like, oh, did you think I look really, like, one night we were just there. And he's like, fuck, you look so hot that night or something. I was like, you actually never told me I looked nice that night. And he was like, oh, my God, you know what? Like, you're right. And, like so like sometimes it's you can tell them what you want like you can tell them what you expect um i'm trying to think of another way to support the self-love journey books i know that some girl messaged me and she was like some a guy i'm seeing i was telling about self-love journey and he bought me your book and it made me feel amazing and like so like books like books for self-love the master of love is a good one my book um relationships is a good one 
<laughs> if I do say so myself and another one for self-love just in general any sort of self-help book like what am I reading at the moment oh no you know what the subtle art of not giving a fuck because self-love really is like when you don't give a fuck about other people's opinions and you just like sort of like look at your own needs and wants and purpose and you just kind of make your own boundaries that way um another way to help her self-love journey is to ask her what her needs are like what do you need from me to make you feel secure do you need me to tell you look nice do you need me to um tell you when i'm home just support asking her what she needs and how she's feeling um a good thing is to do like we relationship reviews um here and there so saying oh what went well this week in the relationship and then so i would do this with jack as well i'd be like you know what it really really is amazing when you text me when you're drinking when you're in bed he doesn't have to do that ever and the fact that I praised him for it he always does it now because he knows that that's what I need like I don't even I actually I think it's one of my needs that he does that because it makes me feel secure so asking them like what do you need in order to feel secure in order to know that I love you like maybe you do need more compliments or you need just more taxes from me or you need something more from me because then that will support her journey oh god I love that question thank you so much for that question and um, so yeah so I'll just wrap it up here guys and leave that with you and please leave a review and please subscribe and if you like it then please tag me on Instagram and what you learned from it because that really really helps me grow and thank you so much guys for tuning in